Which audio check? Testing Twitch, one, two, one, two. I think we're good to start. Okay. Uh, 234. Oh, hang Is on. It... I All cannot right. hear you. I don't know if that's you or me. 234, 234. Yes, no. 234. Uh, that's definitely me. Hang on. It's going to snow. Now, why on earth? This is just weird. I turned that on, and now I can't hear you. Kirk Douglas died at 103. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Did... I opened Audacity. Can you hear no, me? I, I still can't hear you. This is so weird. Oh, that's why. Okay, we're good now. Did you mute everything? I did mute everything. Mm -hmm. Let me uh let me get our camera set up back again. Let's do this. Okay. All right, now we're online and we're <clears throat> ready to go. Okay, 234. <clears throat> one more time, let me go through one more cycle of coughing. <clears throat> okay, you ready? Okay, three, oh, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 234 of the Security Podcast here on the In30 Network. I'm Heim Cohen. Tom is actually down there this time. Yeah, right, right here. It's some, He's somewhere. raising the roof. Yeah. So, and Tom's ears are actually to the side of us. Yes. So, anyway, uh, we, we had a simple topic to talk about, but then a whole slew of news just came and like dropped right on our lap. But uh, before we start, I just want to say my voice is going. I, I'm, I'm, I may be sick, but I'm just normal common cold sick, not anything else sick. I got my flu shot. I got my echinacea, my vitamin C. I'm I'm good, but my throat is getting a little sore. So we'll go with that. So it's that time of year. Yep. It's uh, I do generally take care of myself, so it's this won't get hopefully not much worse. So let's just dive right into it. We, I think we have like six or seven stories, and we're going to first start off with a severe Microsoft Windows uh, cloud flaw. I just heard about it today, so I'm going to hopefully Tom will explain it, but this looks actually pretty bad. Yeah, this was um, unfortunately a, a really, really nasty vulnerability. It is fixed. You don't have to panic. Um but it, it basically, um, it, Checkpoint Security uh, decided to test the security of the Azure cloud. Uh, and they found a, uh, a really nasty bug that basically allowed them to spoof API requests and get underneath into like the host layer uh, of, of Azure hosts. Um, this is pretty bad. This is, it's quite literally isolation breaking. So usually in cloud platforms, you try to isolate customers apart from each other. So, you know, customer A can't access customer B's stuff and vice versa. Um, this flaw basically broke that isolation barrier. Uh, and it was really, really bad. Anyone using Azure could be impacted. Um, it is fixed. Again, to clarify that, uh, Microsoft was able to get in and patch it really quick as soon as I heard about it. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was really bad. Uh, so, uh, one of the, one of the quotes, uh, from, from checkpoint, uh, here in the Forbes article, uh, it reads 
Let's take a bank. Uh, the code runs in the cloud that drives transactions and access to sensitive data. It's relying on the cloud to provide the security. But now I can see those transactions, modify them, delete them. You transfer $100, I make it $1 million. Think of how many organizations run sensitive apps on the cloud. Uh, and this is true. It's not an indictment of the cloud in general. It's not saying that cloud providers, including Azure, is just are awful and you should stay away. That's not it at all. Um, the point really of this story for you, the end user, is that, you know, uh, companies big and small, uh, you know, experts at software design and just starting out, like everyone in between, software has bugs. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter how much money your security personnel you throw at stuff. Bugs will happen and security vulnerabilities will happen. Uh, what really matters in this case is that you try to catch them before they're live. And so you put a lot of time and money and process into place to make sure that that's okay. Um, and more importantly, arguably, is how you respond to these bugs when they do happen. Uh, in, in Microsoft's case, they responded fantastic. Um, they, uh, yeah, so here's, here's another quote from Checkpoint. Um, they were amazing. The takeaway here is that the concept of big uh, the, the big cloud concept of security free from vulnerabilities is wrong. And that's what we showed. It can happen there as well. It's just software and software has bugs. The fact that I uh, can then control the infrastructure gives me unlimited power. So Microsoft reacted quickly. They acted professionally. They got this thing patched up and, you know, good on them. And uh, good on Checkpoint for this exploit. That was fantastic. I mean... <clears throat> I'm hoping that they obviously they disclosed it properly, so this was be able to be patched before it was exploited. Yes. Because again, we don't know if uh, we don't know how 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 many times this was out in the, um, in the in the wilderness in the wild. So hopefully, people have updated. And again, it's just a good thing. Just keep on updating because you wouldn't be able to stop this. But if everyone's on the latest build and everything else, it limit it limits the risk factor, and we should be good from there. Yeah, so it what makes this notable is not that there was a random remote code execution bug or isolation break in a cloud provider. Uh, what makes this big is that uh, the CVE score for this was actually a perfect 10. Uh, it was literally as bad as vulnerabilities can get. Uh, so that's kind of why we're talking about it today. But again, if, if you're a customer of Azure, uh, this was patched without you even knowing it. It was a back-end patch and everything's cool now. So don't worry about it. Again, I just, I, from the non-technical person over here, I would just say, again, it's really important that when you see that update, no matter what it is, take the time to actually do it, whether it's in a few hours or that night, don't just put it off. And I will say, talking about updates like that, my my two son's uh, tablets, they're, they're both some Samsung 8-inch thing, basically said, you can only postpone this uh, this update for three more times. Which I actually do like. You can only postpone this update on a consumer device three more times, two more times, one more time, or you have to update now. Sorry. Because then it forces you to do it, which obviously, if you want full control, you're not going to get it. But at least it it forces you to update, which will keep you safe. For sure. So... <clears throat> Uh, let's see. I'm going to skip ahead and do Google Photos because we're talking about the cloud and, and exploits there. So... Google Photos had a bug where they were sending private videos to strangers. And before you go crazy and jumping, like, how dare they? This is bad, everything else. Yes, 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 it's bad. But it really looks like you had a very specific use case. You had to use Google Takeout, which is their service to uh, try and get your data outside. And apparently, I guess they appended an email address randomly and they claim 0.01%, 0.01% 0, 0 were affected, which is, even though Google has a lot of users, it's still a relatively small number. Yeah, so you had to use Google Takeout to specifically back up your Google Photos between November 21st and November 25th, 2019. If you were within that window, then your videos might have been sent off uh, to an individual who did not own them. Yeah, it's a big bug, but that's a really small window of time. So you are probably not affected. If you are affected, or if you were affected, uh, Google has sent you an email letting you know. So, I mean, again, 1% of probably a billion is still a lot. But however, however, 
it's you had a, it's probably one point oh one percent of those that were those who did that. I don't actually use Google Takeout. Google Takeout is just a service that lets you pull your data from whatever service that they're about to kill. Or if you just say, hey, I want my Google Wave data or my Google Reader data, it's a way to get some JSON file of your stuff. Um, Google Photos, I don't know why anyone would specifically use it in this case, but maybe they were moving somewhere else and they wanted to make sure it was deleted. But anyway, so they did that. Google did respond. They did get a letter. I did not get a letter, so it was I wasn't part of it. And they said, we're sorry, and they they fixed the problem, which, again, I think is good. I wouldn't go with the pitchforks and say, once again, Google is really evil. It's a big company. I would say this happens. We just saw it with Azure. So I think they did the right thing. Yeah, bugs happen. Uh, and it's it's really unfortunate, but um, I you know, generally speaking, um, if you are concerned about the sanctity or privacy of any particular file, whether it's a photo, video, text document, password manager store, whatever, um, I, it might be safer just sitting on your local computer. Now, keep in mind, it's not getting backed up, right? If you're not putting it somewhere, if you're not running your own backup systems, then that copy is the only copy and that can be okay depending on what the data is uh, but if you really truly want to keep something absolutely private uh, make sure you know exactly where it is and exactly how people can get to it by putting photos and documents and videos anywhere on the net you're trusting that provider to keep your data safe and they might not do as good a job as you think i mean i use google photos because i want it in the cloud i want multiple copies but I do go through, and when I take a photo, a picture of my license or my, or some sort of insurance card, I try to make sure I delete it before it gets to the cloud. Not always true, but once I, if it does get to the cloud, I delete it there as well because at least I, I do need it. And and I think people are starting to understand that. I I, I have been talking to a few friends that said, hey, uh, uh, I, I I did this. What should I do? And the answer is just delete it and and just. Like, I don't want to say hope and pray, but Google, I think, does the right thing and eventually deletes it. We haven't heard any too many bad things that way. Yeah. So <laughs> um, moving on, State Farm. So uh, State Farm, the red company that you're in good hands with. I, well, I don't know their motto. Anyway, there was a tweet. If you read their acknowledgement and authorization, Basically, if you sign saying this, they're allowed to act as a HIPAA disclosure uh, person. That's not good. So HIPAA is a privacy act that prevents other people from getting your health information. And the last person or the last group of people you want to get your health information without your knowledge is your insurance company. That is not good. Yeah, so this this <laughs> is pretty shady uh, and it, it was either a gross oversight or somebody trying to do the right thing and making this paperwork really easy to do uh on behalf of the end user right you don't get 27 forms to sign you get one right that's that's super super great um so this this person on twitter um the agent the insurance agent asked for their signature as part of a payment right you're paying sign on the pad you're good don't worry about it you're done um he then got a, a call from his doctor saying, hey, I just got a HIPAA disclosure form from State Farm. This looks kind of fishy. Did you fill one of these out? He did not. State Farm actually used that signature intended for just the payment and copy pasted that onto forms for, uh, for HIPAA authorization. Basically, they copied his payment signature, his credit card signature, onto a form that said, yes, we can access your medical records. This is 110% illegal. This is breach of contract. This is fraud. Uh, this is absolutely against the law. Uh, and it's a HIPAA violation, which means State Farm could incur some pretty severe government-issued penalties. Um I don't know what's going to happen with this, but it's going to be uh, a very interesting case to watch play out. Um, yeah. Look, the one of the things that I'm always concerned about is how does this get to my insurance company? So, so if you're watching the the car insurance commercials, whether it's Progressive or DriveWise or whatever it is, what they're asking you to do is stick a, a dongle in your car where they monitor your driving. So basically, you're giving them insight, 
And in return, they're potentially lowering your rates. One of the things I'm scared to death about, or not scared to death, but really, really scared is them knowing my health information for whatever reason, because then they start using words like pre-existing conditions. And pre-existing conditions are really scary, especially when you're not aware of them. So they take a blood test and they find my health history, I'm prone to diabetes. Oh, you may get diabetes, therefore we won't cover you. That is not good. And that, like I said, I'm actually scared about. So giving State Farm uh, accidentally or on purpose a signature to check out your health information is not, is really, really scares me. Yeah, it's for for those who um, are fortunately unaware of our, our current healthcare situation in America and not getting political, health insurance companies quite literally control whether we live or die. Uh, in pre-existing conditions, basically, they're allowed to say, oh, no, you, you had this horrifying disease before you were a client of ours, so it's not covered. We're not going to pay for any of this medication. And, uh, you know, because you're shopping around for insurance, good luck getting anyone else to pay for it, too. Um, but- like you hear stories that women who go through absolutely normal pregnancies will get denied because the pregnancy or the baby was a pre-existing condition prior to them getting insurance. And you're like, what? And for those who don't know, in a staying in a hospital is about $10,000 per day. So you're in the if, hospital if for lucky. three days. Yeah. So you're in for two days on a normal pregnancy. It's $20,000 that you may not know about because apparently your child is a pre-existing condition, question mark. So we, if you uh, come out of the womb, if you come out of the womb slightly overweight, that's a pre-existing condition. I mean, they'll find any way to deny you insurance and like just, just, just go on Twitter and look at health insurers in the United States and you'll see the problem. Yeah, we, we try to remain uh, pretty apolitical on yeah. this show and in the WhatsApp group chat. But uh, if you would like to reach out to uh, to me specifically, and uh, if, if you just want a Tom style rant and you, you feel like just getting getting the brunt end of that, uh, ask me about my health insurance coverage. I would be I would be more than happy to talk your ear off. And I'm a public I'm a public employee, so I get really good health insurance. I pay a lot of money for it, but. You should ask people who have really bad insurance and all the problems. But again, going back to the topic, it's that they're ask the insurance companies are asking you for for the signature, maybe to do good. Like, hey, uh, hey, look, we're we're trying to cover you for life insurance or disability insurance. We want to know what you have, so you have to disclose to us. Like, we're gonna come. Sometimes they'll come and give you a blood test, or they'll weigh you, or they'll ask for your height and stuff like that because they have to make a determination. That's all in good. But to say here, give us authorization to find everything we can, like op- opposition research, that is not good. And like we said, that's why there are forums and that's why there are all these things to protect you. And and they, it sounded like that they just went and did it without anybody's permission, which will cause, like you said, a serious HIPAA violation fine that, that we should all know about. Yep. So, uh, so be careful. And if, if somebody asks you to just sign once on a pad, especially for disability or life insurance or health insurance, anything like that, uh, make sure to get a copy of all of the documents that will be sent out. And if you did not specifically authorize something, if you did not specifically sign for a particular document, reject it completely. So, yep. And so let's move on. Again, if you want more on this, the health insurance in the United States or whatever it is, we have a WhatsApp group. Find us on Twitter. Find us somewhere. We'll throw you right in. Uh, The next story, Ajit Pai, I think, did something positive, question mark. He he found out that, uh, that, that the carriers were selling phone records or phone location records, which is a big fine and plans to do something about it. Yeah, so uh, one or more wireless carriers has violated U.S. law by selling location data to everyone from bounty hunters to marketers to ad targeters to data brokers to to everyone. Um, So 
Pi wrote a letter, uh, and I'm quoting uh, from the Ars Technical article and from the letter now. Uh, Pi says, I'm committed to ensuring that all entities subject to our jurisdiction comply with the Communications Act and the FCC's rules, including those that protect consumers' sensitive information, such as real-time location data. Accordingly, in the coming days, I intend to circulate to my fellow commissioners for their consideration one or more notices of apparent liability for forfeiture in connection with the apparent violations. Basically, that legalese means, all right, you got caught selling people's personal location data to people that wasn't that, that weren't supposed to have it. This is against the law, and we are going to fine you and fine you heavily. Now, what heavily means in this context, and you know the exact specifics, we'll figure that out later when it comes to light. Uh, but I really, really like that the FCC is doing about it, and I, let's you know we have not been Agit Pies fans here on this show, just. Yeah, complete, complete transparency. Um, but he has done something great here. This is fantastic. We absolutely need to hold these carriers accountable. And government fines and intervention is one way to do that. And that's the power the FCC has. So, Pi, good on you. I, unfortunately, <clears throat> I agree with you. This is all good. The problem is I feel like the fine is like one day's profit. It's going to be yeah. a very... Like Facebook was fined five and a half million dollars for doing something in Illinois. Maybe five and a half billion dollars. No, million dollars. Whatever it was, it wasn't. It was like one day's profit. So it's like, okay, fine. We'll make more than this just by continuing doing what it is. Um, again, the health insurance companies can ask for your location and see if uh, when you say you were at the gym, were you actually at the gym? And then they can raise your health insurance rates. Again, one of the reasons. Tying back into that before, I don't want the health insurance companies getting anything. Um, again, data aggregators, maybe that's why I saw ads for stuff that, I don't know, that just popped up. They're getting it from uh, the location data. Who knows? But I really, really don't want my carrier selling the location data without me knowing. Yep. What, what would be even worse is it not that they saw you didn't go to the gym, but that they saw you hit the donut shop down the street. Yeah, so you go for they they see that you're only at the gym for ten minutes to get the little insurance signature, and then you go to the donut shop for the twenty minutes after that. But again, yep. it's it's we're trying to tell you yes, let us your location for all these good things, and then we find out you're burning us on the backside, and it's just it's it's come on, people, it's like, I don't have a choice in having these. These are all. We have no choice. We need a cell phone or you need a smartphone or whatever it is, and you're paying for it. And then they're literally selling the data behind you. Yeah, so, it's um, it's shady. And as it turns out, completely illegal. So, <clears throat> um, and then, so that's it for the, the, the little stories here. The main story tonight is Avast. Avast is a virus scan. Uh, they're, I think they're free. They may have a paid version, but I think yeah, they're free. They have a they have uh, a free tier. Uh, they do have a paid tier. Okay, and it's worse that the paid tier is probably in this boat. Basically, mm -hmm. Avast, when they installed, took all the data and sold it. I mean that that that's the short answer. That's that's basically the easy thing you need to understand. But they literally took everything you did and they sold it to the highest bidder. And it has clients like Home Depot, Google, Microsoft, Pepsi, and McKinsey. I don't know why Home Depot, but Okay, so all the stuff that you were using Firefox for, but because you used the vast, Google still has. And yep. the problem is, is that people say you need a virus scan to protect from malware and whatever it is. And they are literally installing something so egregious on your system because they have to go everywhere. They have to break SSL. They have to be the man in the middle to see what you're doing on Gmail and everything else. And then they're literally taking that and selling it against you. <laughs> yeah, so they were they were grabbing uh, data uh, obtained by motherboard and PC mag, and this this uh, article comes from Vice, uh, included, but not limited to, Google searches, lookups of locations and GPS coordinates for Google Maps, uh, companies' LinkedIn pages, YouTube videos, people visiting um, certain interesting video websites, uh, and everything else. So basically. Everything you did in your browser was collected, 
time stamped and sent off to Avast to sell through their jump shot program. Uh, so, you know, quite literally, the thing you installed to protect you from spyware and malware and viruses uh, it was actually the spyware and malware and viruses itself. Again, going back to the healthcare, the healthcare companies are buying your symptoms that you're typing on Google and they're, they're going to use they're that. They're buying the, the recipes for cake that you're you're firing up. So, and they're literally seeing what you're doing. And, and if you want to talk about AI and machine learning, uh, we're not that good of it as humans, but now they run it through their filters and they can target you even more. And it just goes back to say, and it's, and it's, we want to tell people how to stay safe, but here you go, another virus scan doing something really shady. It's really hard to say, hey, uh, these are the virus scans you should use because one by one, they're getting caught doing something they shouldn't be doing. And maybe that's because Microsoft's virus scan is just, is just, is eating, eating into their profits, but it's just, it's unconscionable. And I get it. People don't want to pay for virus scan. And that's why we, we recommend at least just leave the Microsoft one on, but now they have to keep their business model going and they went the wrong way. Yeah. A, uh, a quote here says every search, every click, every buy on every site. Um, yeah. And they, just like you said, these are big, big companies that were, uh, that were buying data from a vast jump shot program. Uh, Expedia, Intuit, uh, L'Oreal, um, Craig, uh, YouTube promotion service, VidIQ, Hitwise, the consumer insight service. Um, like this is, this is massive. This is absolutely massive. A bunch of people are using this. The, the, so that's the first problem with that. The second problem is the last link, which is we're sorry. And so it's the, we're sorry that we did all this, not that uh, we, we did violate your trust. So we're going to stop the jump shot program. However, the data is still gone. They made this decision and the data is still gone. And now they're saying, hey, we're going to do it, do it but there's no, there's no accountability. Like it should say, yeah. we will accept the gigantic fine that GDPR is going to, we will be happy to pay the GDPR fine. And we will be more transparent with you. We will give you the jump shot data that we can find of you or whatever it is. But no, it's just, hey, we're sorry. Yeah, the, the Avast CEO has a, a blog post out um, saying, uh, for these reasons, I, after they list a bunch of reasons, I, together with our board of directors, have decided to terminate the jump shot data collection and wind down jump shots operations with immediate effect. Okay, now to give a little bit of timeline, um, JumpShot was started in 2015. For five years, they have been collecting as much data as your browser would give them on all devices, including timestamps and full URLs, uh, and selling it to whoever would pay for it. And, <laughs> and it continues, when I took over as CEO, I, I evaluated this and I think that we should have stopped it, but we did it. And so yeah. again, it's, again, the money is coming in. You have really good data. You are breaking the lock on, on, on the websites to see what's going on. And if you can sell that, that is really valuable. And then they say, oh, well, it's based on cybersecurity. No, it's not. If you were, you wouldn't be doing this. So <laughs> it is a, it's a bad thing. Yeah, this is, uh, it's. It's unconscionable. It is not. Not only is it is it shady, and not only is it dishonest, but it it's evil. Let's let's be real. It's evil. You installed this piece of software, whether you paid for it or not. You installed this piece of software with the understanding that it was going to defend your privacy uh, and and defend your computer from the evils of the internet. Uh, and instead, it was the evils itself. It was the evils we collected along the way. That was the real journey. So we don't use, so we, so the U.S. government doesn't like to use Kaspersky because Kaspersky was a former KGB thing. Whether it's good or bad or indifferent, the fact that we, we just, the, the mention of impropriety there is enough for the entire U.S. government to say, don't use it. Same thing with Huawei. We don't have any actual evidence that Huawei is stealing secrets or whatever it is, but we just flat out go, here's a company who is now getting caught. And the answer is, hey, please take our, 
take our apologies. But it just looks like McAfee, Norton, Symantec, Kaspersky, all these virus scan companies end up getting caught or have some doubt in your mind. It's just like, what is somebody to do? Yeah, so our, our official recommendation, and, and this has been our official recommendation for years now, really, um, is, look, you're you're running a Mac, you're running Linux. Nobody makes Linux viruses, A. Eh? Um, I, I mean, they, they exist, but it's not, it's not prolific. And the things you do on Linux, even as a desktop user, aren't, aren't enough to cause you pain. Uh, the, the four people out there using Linux that are listening to this show. Um, if you're on a Mac, Apple already does stuff in the kernel to watch for badness. They've got a, a blacklist of software and they do their best to protect you. Yeah, it's, it's a, you know, a little on the slow side for them to update, but they're getting better. Um, and, and frankly, the target area is not that big. Uh, if you're on Windows, Microsoft has already built this in, right? It's called Windows Defender. It's on Windows 10. It's enabled by default. It keeps itself up to date with Windows updates. Uh, and it generally stays out of your way and does a pretty good job. Um, it it does a way better job. Like if you look at security holistically on your operating system, you are way, way better off trusting an antivirus built by the operating system vendor than you are installing some weird third-party thing that has to hook directly into the kernel to do its job and you don't actually know what it's doing behind your back right we know windows 10 is, is generally spyware uh but why add more to that pile right use windows defender keep it updated keep it running it's fine it works just fine and you really really don't need to pay for antivirus and please please don't install free antivirus well it's we're, we're going to talk about this next week but it's once again we're finding out that installing antivirus ends up making you more likely to get something either because you think it's being you're okay or whatever else it's it's our tips next week it's just keeping things updated and just asking yourself does this sound right should i be doing this is probably your best bet just limit limiting what you're doing i like the idea of using your phone for social media using an ipad using a chromebook using whatever and leave your computing for word and excel and and basic banking things things that you know and do something else with it anyway we're gonna we're just gonna run out of time, but we're gonna talk about that next week. So we're we're a little short, but anyway, we're we're just fine. So let's hang up. We'll see everyone next week, and we're gonna talk about antivirus next week. See you, everyone. Okay, bye. All right, let me turn off Twitch. Mm -hmm.